Snass drunk. Sometimes I wonder, what is useful about doing a video about a game like The Page Master? Why am I doing this? And you definitely might find yourself thinking that if you ever play this game, with other questions occasionally popping up like, what is the meaning of life, and does it have anything to do with really crappy licensed Super Nintendo games? Well, the way I try and rationalize it is that someone might find a game like this for super cheap somewhere, and they might not know what it is. I mean, I'd never even heard of this game, or of the movie it's based on, which is a half-animated, half-live-action movie movie starring Macaulay Culkin, Christopher Lloyd, and Patrick Stewart, among others. So if I saw this at a place like Gamers Anonymous in Albuquerque, New Mexico for like $5, I might be tempted to check it out. So this video is just a simple statement saying, please don't do that. I can't really speak for the movie since I haven't seen it, but it does have a great premise. It's about a kid who gets swallowed up by a library and gets trapped with all sorts of goofy characters from classic novels like Treasure Island, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You'd think this would be perfect fodder to make into a video game, and you'd be wrong. You get three lives and unlimited continues to get through three worlds split up into several levels, and there is a password system here. This is your typical side-scrolling platformer, only the controls are way too loose and the camera is way too drifty. Yeah, you can clearly see from 10 seconds of footage that this is one of those games where the camera is just all over the place when you merely tap the D-pad. It gets old very quickly. It doesn't help that the hit detection for just about everything in this game also seems to work whenever it feels like it. You do have a health meter here, it kind of works like Sonic the Hedgehog, where if you pick up rings, or a power-up in this case, you take damage and the power-up flies away, and you get a chance to get it back. If you get hit without a power-up, you lose a life, and if you lose all your lives, you go all the way back to the beginning of the world. Some of the power-ups include shoes that make you jump higher, marbles that you can fling at enemies, and stuff that allows you to climb ceilings, and that brings me to the level design. This is the kind of game where each level has you exploring a bit to find the exit, only the game does a terrible job showing where you can and can't go, and what you can and can't jump on, which is especially problematic in this dark and dreary setting that you start out with. Don't get me wrong, one of the few positives this game has going for it is the visual presentation. The game looks pretty good, but jeez, it gets old running into dead ends and jumping into pits when you're just trying to find your way around. There's all sorts of weird and confusing decisions that the developers subject you to in this game, like why not start with the marble projectile? Why is this game so difficult considering it's a game clearly that's made for kids? Why the hell can I see anything? Why did they start the game in such a dark location where you're only trying to find your bearings? It's one of those things where I'm probably putting more thought into this than the people who made this game. There is some evidence that the folks behind this game did try at least a little bit. There's branching paths that show up on the world map when you complete a level. That's kind of neat. And like I said earlier, the visuals are well done. If you're able to find your way out of the first world, eventually you'll explore a pirate ship and a fantasy setting. Plus there are mode seven levels where you ride a book around collecting stuff. What are those, trees? Seriously, man? What, did an Atari 2600 game somehow leak into this world or something? Seriously though, when you're literally running into stuff like that in a game, it's pretty obvious that whoever made this game didn't even bother to finish it. I should mention quickly that this game is also on Sega Genesis and Game Boy, and it's pretty much the same thing, just different varieties of awfulness, I guess. There's also a PC game based on the movie that's a point-and-click adventure game, and it's gotta be better than this. So yeah, I know I'm not the target audience for a game like this. It's a game based on a kid's movie. I mean, someone actually gave this game a 10 out of 10 on GameFAQs. No, really, go look for yourself. Bless that person's heart. But if you ever run into this game somewhere, look the other way. It's pretty awful. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.